the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you this evening as we gather to celebrate the great gift of life we receive through within in Jesus Christ. We gather on the second Sunday in ordinary time to say thank you to God for the many gifts we've received through his grace. Father Clifford and I were talking. He said, is anybody going to come to Mass tonight? with the football game, and then he reminded me that it was later. Uh, so we're happy we fit the schedule for the, the playoff game this evening. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the divine mysteries today, we call to mind our continuing need for God and for his love and mercy and the life that we share together. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you turned water into wine at Cana. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who governs all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the spirit, 
the expression of wisdom, to another, the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another, mighty deeds, to another, prophecy, to another, discernment of spirits, to another, varieties of tongues, to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. And there were six stone jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory. And his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I don't know if you did the math. But 180 gallons is a lot of wine, right? <laughs> it's too much, in fact. It's kind of one of those things that we don't think about. We say, okay, holds this much, probably 180 gallons. And maybe the first thing that might even come to our minds is, wait a second, there's going to be wasted wine. That's no good, right? Again, you agree. But why? What's the significance of having too much? We know from other stories, particularly in John's Gospel, that there's too much bread from the loaves and the fishes that's left over. And in Jesus' time, we know that only a person who had total and complete wealth could waste. We are very conservative in that sense. And we say, well, we just want to get enough. But in Jesus' time, to tell the story right, he had to put that sign of wealth in there. That the life we share in Jesus Christ is not one of just breaking even. It's one of an abundance of life. Overflowing. Too much. And high quality. And you can learn that move too. Maybe your next time you have people over, you put the good wine out first. But, but that's it. It's good. What we receive makes us rich. 
It's an interesting thing because we tend to get caught up in difficult times especially, but, but even in good times sometimes, with what is concerning us. What are our major complaints? What are our challenges? And we live in them in a dark place. We forget the abundance of life that we gain in this great faith. In participating in God's life, we are made rich. And we, how easily we forget it. And how constantly the gospel reminds us of it. And we tend to do that. And then we go, Lord, if you just take this problem away, or if you just forgive me for these sins, and he does those things for us, but he never is happy with just wiping the slate clean. Never happy with just you getting by. Always there, ready to pour himself out so that you can be filled to overflowing. That is what we're offered. That is the great gift that we're offered. And the challenge for us is to kind of get out of our own way so that God may shine that light into this world, a world that desperately needs it, so that you may become that vessel uh, taking the good news to every corner of your life where you go. In the second reading, it speaks to that. There are many parts of this body. It's all part of that same body of Christ. We have to come to a realization that there is people that um, I will never be able to reach that you or light will shine on. That God will do his work through us. As we go into different corners, we have different gifts. That we have different uh, talents. We have different, we're in different places. We live in different times. And yet we all call the same uh, Christ Lord. And that is, again, the wealth of the people of God, not its weakness. It's its wealth that God fills up this world with his own self, with people who live his life with him. There's a priest uh, who died a number of years ago, Father Jerry Schifferly, who was my pastor when I was a little boy. My, my chalice, I use the parish chalice now, but... My chalice that I have, the silver one, which you've seen many times, he gave to me. It was his. And he had a wonderful saying, and it speaks to the first reading. And he says, As for desolation, is the world made desolate because we stop thinking with our hearts? Because we stop thinking with our hearts. The first reading says, No longer will you be desolate. You'll be rich. You'll be wealthy. You'll have everything overflowing. No longer will those things be the case. And if he's right, this wonderful saying that he had, that it's made that way because we stop thinking in our hearts. And that reminder is with us all the more strongly that God has given us this great light, his light, to shine into a world that needs it desperately. We read this reading and we say, oh, that's nice. We get caught up, why did he call his mother woman? And then we think to ourselves, where else did he call her woman? From his cross. Joining these two moments in time, the beginning and the end of the earthly ministry, into one moment, begins at a wedding and it ends with the marriage of heaven and earth. The writer of the gospel knew what he was doing. Communicate to us the great gift we receive the great gift we receive, we receive this great Lord who wants nothing more for us than us to live in the fullness of life. So may we, with all of our hearts, with all of our strength, say thank you for the greatness of that gift. Seek to end our differences between us. Seek to love with our whole hearts especially those most in need, those who we might even say are furthest from him. May we pray for one another constantly. And when good things happen, may we celebrate joyfully. May people, when they see us, when they see the wonderful light and life and peace and joy that we live in, find Jesus Christ and bring themselves here. 
Amen. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Like the couple in Cana, we invite the Lord Jesus, Mary, and the apostles to our celebration. We invoke their names as we turn to God in prayer. Our response to these petitions is Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that in spite of Mary's words, we may become better disciples by doing all that God asks of us. We pray to the Lord. For lawmakers and health care workers, that the work they do protect the sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. For military members, police officers, firefighters, and first responders, that they be promoters of peace, gifted with courage, hope, and strength, and protected in their duties. We pray to the Lord. For all nations, races, and religious groups, that Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream be fulfilled among us, so that every person may be treated with dignity and respect, we pray to the Lord. For an end to violence in families, amongst neighbors, and in our city streets, that there be an end to harsh words, harmful acts, deadly weapons, and cold indifference, so that our homes and nations be havens of peace, we pray to the Lord. For all couples, that they may be channels of God's love to one another, and signs of God's presence in society. We pray to the Lord. For all with COVID-19 or any other illness or disease, for those bound by substance abuse or addiction, and for all that are impacted by violence, that God's healing love will relieve their pain, strengthen their minds and bodies, and restore them to full health. We pray to the Lord. For those who have requested our prayers, for those who have no one to pray for them, for the silent intentions that we hold in our hearts, and for all who have died, especially for Grace Godino, Una Logram, Rocco Trunkler, and for Steve LaCrosse, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you give us your Son in Eucharist. Strengthen us through this sacrament to your will on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the presentation of the gifts will be number 633, Be Thou My Vision.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word. Your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate with the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bridget, Saint Scholastica, Saint Benedict, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Salvator, our Bishop, Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and in heart, through Christ our Lord. Before you leave today, there's good news about the CMA. We're, we're just a couple of fractions of a decimal away from 90% of the goal. So that's great news. We're about where we were last year, so that's good. We've caught up. Thank you very much. Um, if you have not given or if you can continue to help us out or if anybody, I put this in the bulletin last week, would like to sponsor a match challenge to help us meet that goal, that would be wonderful. Uh, we've had people in uh, all the years that I've been here do, do that at the end, so that would be great. Uh, Father Clifford, we're, we're still working on uh, his visa status and I think uh, Senator Schumer's office is involved now and they're working with the diocese. So uh, he's got to go back to Ghana. Uh, on the 23rd, but uh, keep your prayers and fingers crossed that he is able to return at least to the diocese um, for a little bit longer because uh, I don't know that they have anybody else to send here at this point, so <laughs> uh, I'll miss him very much. So uh, keep that in prayer. Have a wonderful day. You have time to go to Wegmans before the game and all that. So there you go. Be safe and stay warm. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing hymn is number 571, The Church's One Foundation.